Hello, my friends, and I hope you are having a fantastic day. Today, I found an article that reflects to me one of the reasons the market isn't doing what they expect it to do. And I mean, there are a lot of reasons. This is just one of the most individually human reasons that are out there. So this is Braid Anniversary Edition Sold Like Dog Shit. Developer Jonathan Blow says, the future is uncertain. Uh, This is by Wesley Yinpool on IGN. Braid developer Jonathan Blow has said the recently released anniversary edition of the indie puzzle platformer has sold horribly and indicated he is now struggling to employ staff full time. Blow, who also created The Witness, catapulted at the upper echelons of indie video game development after Braid enjoyed enormous success on Xbox Live Arcade in 2008. It's since become known as one of the greatest indie games of all times with a number of perfect review scores under its belt. 16 years later, in May 2024, Blow released a remaster with fully repainted artwork, new puzzles, and in-depth commentary across PC via Steam, Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4 and 5, Xbox One and Xbox Series X and S, Android and iOS, with the mobile version released by Netflix to those with an active subscription. The anniversary edition was announced during Sony's State of Play in August 2020. We will take a quick look at the pretty screenshots. If you look at it, it is quite lovely. The colors and detailing are very nice. I've never actually played the game, to be entirely honest. I've heard positive things about it. Maybe someday I'll actually play it. As surfaced by a user on Reset Era, a YouTube channel called Blowfan published a compilation of commentary from Blow on Braid Anniversary Edition sales performance made during a number of live streams in the months since launch. While Blow fails to confirm a sales figure, the picture he paints here is clear. Braid Anniversary Edition has flopped. In one stream dated June 17th, Blow said Braid Anniversary Edition has sold horribly. It is sold like dog shit compared to what we need to make for the company to survive, he continued. So the future is uncertain. Let's put it that way. And here's the thing, for the company to survive. Let's take a quick look really quick here. All right, so Braid initially released in 2008. What games has he done since would be the next question. All right, so it looks like after releasing Braid in 2008, he released The Witness in 2016. For 2017 to present, it says he's working on the Jai programming language, Untitled Sokoban Game, and Braid Anniversary Edition. So right now, most of his time appears to be... Hold on, let me put this where you can see it. So because C++, he decided, was too overly complex for game design, he started to develop his own programming language called Jai. He is developing a Sokoban-style puzzle game for it, which he is estimating that it would take players about 400 hours to complete. And he is also saying that there's another project he's been making, a prototype for a single-player game that's not a puzzle game. And it's supposedly got 40 to 50 hours of playable content. He intends for Thekla to make the game using the game engine being developed for the Sokoban game once it has matured. He plans to work on the game for 20 years, releasing it in installments. Each installment will make the game larger and more complex. Flo noticed one of his goals for the project is to ex- expand his design abilities. Okay, so that explains a lot. So part of the reason it appears that he decided to even do the anniversary edition is obviously because he needs more sales. The best way to get more sales is to release something new. If you don't have anything new that's ready to go right now, you go with an anniversary edition. Braid sold well. He assumed that it would sell well again, especially if he included extra stuff, including commentary. On July 21st, he was asked again about sales, and he says they've been terrible, utterly terrible. Uh, On July 22nd, he said, Releasing Braid Anniversary Edition on so many platforms made a difference, but the problem is most of those platforms are fucking dead now. Steam is easily still our biggest platform, he continued. There would have been something to be said for just not porting to half those platforms. It's a really interesting thing that we did. We did commentary in a way that nobody's ever done it, at a much more thorough level than anybody's ever done it. And at some point, you just have to know that what you did was a good thing, even if the world doesn't really acknowledge it. And this is one of those cases, I think. So he seems very pretentious. That's honestly the only way to describe it. 
And I don't necessarily mean that in a bad way, but it is kind of bad because what it's doing is blinding him to the fact that while I understand he has these goals and drives, he also needs to survive to make them a reality. And well, I'm going to be entirely honest. I don't know many people who play a video game for commentary. I know there are people who enjoy watching game commentaries, but they aren't the majority of people. They're like kind of a weird niche of people. And generally, they're more about specific games that they enjoy as opposed to just any game. I'm sure there are some Braid fans who absolutely loved it. I'm sure they were ecstatic and over the moon and enjoyed every minute. But realistically, your average player, it's not what they're looking for. It's kind of like the director commentary on a DVD. You're going to have some people who watch it sometimes and other people who don't ever and the majority probably don't ever. And while it's great, he feels like he did something fantastic. There's a reason the world didn't really acknowledge it. It's because it's not really what the world wanted. In a stream on July 27th, Blow once again addressed the Braid Anniversary Edition sales, but this time cast doubt on his company's ability to employ staff. Responding to a question on how many people at his company were working on the compiler for the programming language Jai full-time, Blow said none because we can't afford to pay anyone because the sales are bad. That's one major mistake he made. Putting the game in front of people is great. The more people who see some of the game, the more people who are more likely to play it, who are more likely to be interested in it. I had honestly never really heard of Braid previously to, well, I mean, I probably had, I take that back. I'd probably watched some kind of top 10 or something that included it on it, and but I'd never heard of it in a way that made me interested to play it. Let's say that. He says, cons don't do much to help promote video games. That That's so wrong. If cons didn't do much to promote video games, they wouldn't have cons completely devo devoted to promoting video games. Because if people can be there, interact, live action, put their hands on things, they're more likely to want to buy it and be interested in it. It gives people that kind of personal interaction that sometimes is lost in the online environment. So that's definitely, that, that's one huge mistake he's making right there. He also said promoting the game on podcasts and YouTube interviews wouldn't have helped either. Again, he's wrong. I mean, it's probably not going to like make or break the whole bank, but it could have put a tiny dent in it, especially if you're a personable person and you're good at selling your product. I'm going to be honest. He doesn't sound like he is just listening to this little bit that I have or just reading this, these little bits kind of makes me feel like he's one of those people who I appreciate is likely an artist and considers himself an artist and he has a passion for what he's doing but because he has that passion he could be kind of an asshole and I'm I, obviously I don't have a lot to go on so this is me theorizing maybe he's the sweetest guy ever but bear with me when you are like that when you are that kind of artist you have a tendency to forget that there is another side of the coin and he has a very real reminder of the other side of the coin, considering he's running his own studio to, tr to develop an entire programming language. For people who don't understand how difficult and time-consuming that is, just imagine making a regular language. Imagine having to think of something for every word, for everything that exists, and then having to make words that describe things that don't exist. That's basically the same thing. There's a reason programming is done in languages because you, you, you're speaking the language of the computer and every language has its flaws and, and its positives. But to develop a whole new language, I mean, I do hope it's a great language. I hope he's wildly successful with it once he gets it out there. But until he does, it's going to suck. There are others who suggest there was little demand for Braid Remastered in the first place with the original perfectly playable still all these years. And that's another thing that's definitely going to hurt. If the, the original was still playable for people after all these years with no problem on a console or whatever, he probably... Well, let's see what Braid originally released for. So originally it released on Xbox 360's Xbox Live Arcade, went on Mac OS, PlayStation 3 in 2009. So yeah, he probably could have gotten away with maybe doing a 
No, the Microsoft Windows right there. Probably could have gotten away with doing a Switch version and made money that way without putting in all the extra time into developing for across the board, not to mention the time and money that would have gone into redoing all the artwork and all that stuff. He probably could have handled the code back end and put it on the switch and made himself a good amount of money. But at the same time, this is a person who genuinely loves what he's making. These are the people you want making games, but generally you want them making games with somebody who has more of a business mind who can help them make some of these decisions because they're going to get very result blind and think that they have to put all this into it without realizing there's a much smaller step that they can take. And it's not a bad thing. It does make them a little unlikable personally, but that can also lead to amazing games. You don't have to like someone for them to make great art. A lot of the best artists, as we all know, are complete assholes. A lot of the best actors are complete assholes because what they take what they do into such heart. I'm not, I'm not really make. this isn't an excuse for them to be an asshole. It's just an understanding of why they're an asshole. I wish they weren't, you know, it makes life a lot easier if people aren't assholes. But yeah, that's a lot of things he has going against him for this. The game was still completely, perfectly playable. Most people don't need or really want commentaries necessarily. Honestly, he probably could have released a commentary video or something on a, as a DLC or something. And then people would have bought that. The people who want that would have bought that and watched it. You know, an original soundtrack. There's so many ways to monetize these that would have been much more cost effective in helping him get the influx of cash he very obviously needs to help him continue with his new design. It says Blow Studio Thecla Inc., which also developed and published 2016 first person puzzle game The Witness. It is said to be working on a number of unannounced projects, including a VR game. So yeah, the fact that he is running out of money isn't surprising. It's disappointing because he does sound like, like I said, he does sound like someone who's passionate about his work as opposed to, to being an activist or something like that. He's just passionate about what he's doing and he wants to make what's in his head that's why he's creating a new programming language because then he has something that fits the way he works to work from and can make better projects there's nothing wrong with that that's totally cool but he obviously needs a little bit of help in terms of how to get himself through to that point i don't like seeing somebody with a lot of passion and talent struggle because of their own blindnesses because he he does seem to have a lot of both. And it, you can actually hear that in the way he's speaking when he says it's horribly and how he up talks, how they did the commentary and how they went so in depth because he has so much pride in his work. There's a lot of developers out there who can't do that because they don't have the same pride. Now, pride isn't always a great thing to have, especially if it's holding you back from other things, but there's nothing wrong with pride as long as it's contained at the same time. But the problems he's having aren't really, unfortunately, just the problems of someone who's passionate and interested in doing good work. If you are passionate about something else, but you are trying to use another forum or another art form to push what you're passionate about, you can develop the same blind spots. It's why activists in gaming don't understand why their activist games or their activist storytelling or whatever doesn't connect with the audience because to them, it's the most important thing. While to the audience, the game is the most important thing. I feel like Blow has a much better chance of connecting with the audience because yeah, he might be abrasive and pompous or whatever. And this is again, all in my mind. I'm sure, I'm sure he's a very nice fellow. <laughs> Actually, I have no idea. I have no clue. Uh, he'll probably never hear this. He'll probably never meet me. So it's a whatever. I am conjecturing based on what I've been reading. But he has that passion for gaming. He wants to give the best game he can. And people will forgive a lot of deficiencies if you want to give them the best possible product that they love. Personal deficiencies, let me say. But if you are taking their, their the, the product that they love 
and instead of trying to give them the best product that you that that you can and are giving them something that resembles the product that they love but instead has something else inside of it it doesn't work and then you have these same blind spots as blow here and you don't understand why people don't love it it's fascinating how you can have two people who are working in the same job field and have the same passion level, but because they're on different routes, on different tracks, because that passion is focused in a different direction, how much it can affect what they're doing. You have Blow who makes these this incredible game of, that people loved that as I know, has made top 10 lists and is struggling because he made some poor decisions and honestly tried to give too much when something a little less would have gotten him a lot more. And then you have people who joined a corporate AAA studio because they knew that that was the best way to push their agenda and because their agenda is the important thing, they're blind to everything else and they make their own poor decisions and then the company suffers and then things get cut and it goes on down the line. But for all his passion, I genuinely hope things begin to work out. I hope he finds a way to deal with the lack of funding that he's having right now. Uh, unfortunately, I can't say that people are suddenly going to start buying Braid Anniversary Edition. I'll probably look into it since I've never played it and I do love puzzle games. Uh, but right now I'm a little short on funds, so I won't be buying any games for a little bit. And if I did, I would be getting Kanitsugami because I'm really interested in that game right now. That's my next gaming purchase, I think, is Kanitsugami. And maybe Braid down the line. We will see. All that said, what do you guys think? Do you think that passion is enough to make a good game? Do you think that he made some poor decisions? Do you believe that conventions and YouTubers can make or break the difference in selling a video game? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment, subscribe, and turn on the notifications. Uh, if you really liked it, you can feel free to share it around, and I will catch you later.